I can remember my husband coming into the ambulance and the crew saying, say your goodbyes now, you can't follow April into the hospital. And from Stuart's point of view, he thought that this would probably, maybe, be the last time that he saw me. I was blue lighted into hospital, went into resus where the staff were just absolutely fantastic and took over my care. The consultant came to see me and told me that if I needed to be resuscitated, they wouldn't do it because my lungs were in such a bad state. And I guess really that's when it hit home that I might not be coming out of this hospital. But I was so ill and things were being done for me that it was more my family that were finding it very, very difficult. You know, they couldn't be with me in what could have been my last moments. And I know there's many, many families that have been in that situation. Eventually, I was stabilised in A&E and sent up to intensive care, where my first impression was all of these nurses and doctors in PPE equipment. They looked so tired, yet they gave their all to everybody. Um, I was in intensive care for a few days before I was moved on to the ward where I stayed for another two weeks. While I was in the ward, I was in a four-bedded bay and people were dying around me from COVID. And I'd lie there at night thinking, I wonder if it's my time tonight. Uh, fortunately, I'm still here, but it's only thanks to the skills of the doctors and nurses at the hospital. I, owe, I really do owe my life to them. I never thought it would happen to me. You know, I was quite meticulous in my hand washing. As a former nurse, that's drilled into you from day one. But it did, it still got me. Um, I came out of the hospital. I could just about get up the stairs, stopping three times on my way upstairs. I was told that it would take me a long time to get over this and to listen to my body and rest if I needed it. I did that. I had to go to bed many, many times during the day. It's now six months on since I had COVID. I still get very breathless with the long COVID. I still get tired and a few times a week I have to go to bed in the afternoon, which really isn't like me. Anybody that knows me know that I'm a, a doing sort of person. I don't rest unless I'm not feeling well. My taste can still be funny. So yeah, it's had a, a huge, huge impact on my life, but also on my family's life and what it must have been like for them not to be able to get in touch with me when I was in hospital at the most critical time must have been absolutely terrible. As I said, I was fortunate. The skills of the staff at Harrogate Hospital saved me and they really, really did save me. The, I have to say the ancillary staff, the domestics and the porters, while I was at the hospital, kept me going. It's a very strange place to be when you can't have any visitors at all. Um, and the people that are around you are too ill to have conversations with you. So they really did. They were my lifeline. Um, they told me what was happening in the world. So, you know, I thank them from the, the very, very bottom of my heart. And my message to everybody is to do as we're asked. Please wash your hands, keep your space, wear your mask. But most of all, stay home unless you need to. There's so many people out and about that don't need to be out and about. So please just stay home, keep safe. You do not want any of your family or yourself to go through this.